Hello everybody, I'm uh, Gary Linden. I'm the curator of the Chicagoland Combined Veterans Museum located in River Grove, Illinois. And we're gonna do another nostalgic one. Uh, we're going back to the Old West. We did a previous one of Western toy guns from the 50s and 60s. Today we're doing real ones. So we're gonna come around here. We're gonna start up here. Uh, this is a McClellan saddle. They started making these in 1950, or 1859. They were used in the Civil War. They kept going. They made these into the early 1920s. Uh, this one is in real nice, pretty nice shape. I got it laying over a, a box, so you're not gonna see too much of the back, but there's one of the straps with a wood stirrup. This is the side. Uh, well, like a patch or so to help protect the horse. The military in the Calvary would have a clip-on canteen. We have that on there. Now we're going to go over. When he's still out, I'm going to get my rug. I'll talk when I'm putting them on. And we are going to go now down here. We're going to start with this one. This is a, a Colt model 1849 pocket pistol. Like I said, these are all original. This could have been used in the Civil War and then gone up into the Western days. This one here, this was used by the Union Calvary. This is what you call a burnt side carbine. I'll let them get a good picture of this. And this one on the back side does have what you'd call the saddle ring. And they would have a big black strap going across their shoulder with a snap like this that they would hook onto this. So that's how they would be carrying it when they were riding their horse. Now this is a real old one. This is called a pepper box. This, uh, they started this one in about 1845. It's five shots. You would have a percussion cap here when you pull the trigger, this hammer would come up, hit the percussion cap, and it would send out the projectile. Another Civil War gun. This is a Smith & Wesson model number two, U.S. Army. The model number one was a smaller one. A Western holster. Uh, we have a nice Bowie knife here. Now this is a Remington, around 1858. This is six shots. The uh, hand grip on this side is a little banged up, but what's interesting about this, on the other side on the hand grip, if you look close, there's notches filed in here, and uh, for most people, you shouldn't know what that means in an old gun that was somebody that shot and killed. And it looks like there could be some on the other side. This is the Western holster it came in. Now, this is just a little pouch that they could put tobacco, money, whatever they wanted to put in. We have leg irons from the Old West with the original key. Handcuffs from the Old West with the original key. Now these two are a little bit more modern, but I'm going to read you a little something about the letter that came with them. And I'm going to go down here. It says, uh, they also came with a pair of spurs I did not get. Uh, these three items belong to my grandfather, Robert or R.D. Atkins, who was a deputy marshal for Judge Isaac Parker at Fort Smith, Arkansas. He served for a, four, uh, for a short time in the early 1890s and worked uh, the Indian Territory. This information came from both my grandmother and my parents. He was also in some form of law enforcement after leaving Judge Parker's service. My grandfather was married to my grandmother who was full-blooded Cherokee uh, Creek, and he was Anglo, and he was named after him. So that had some real nice prominence to these. For that old cowboy cup of coffee, they had their little cup. 
an old slouch hat, just a fighting knife and a nice leather scabbard, another pair of old Western handcuffs. Now this one, this is a Colt Frontier six shooter. This one is 44 or 40 caliber. So the ammunition for their Winchester was interchangeable. That's why out in the Old West, they really like these because they had one type of ammunition for both. But what's very interesting about this, there was at one time a six point star attached to this. And if you look right here, you can see all the little marks that appear where he used this as a hammer to probably put in wanted posters. So at one time, I was probably a gun of a law enforcement officer. Our Wells Fargo box, not this one I made, but it's as similar to a Wells Fargo strong box, that same dark green color. Uh, these two here, these are original wax seals from Wells Fargo. On a stagecoach, the shotgun guard would have a shotgun. This one's from uh, around 1860 up into the 1880s. And it was used by the Western stagecoach line. The number 10 is the rack number. So that driver would actually sign this out, or, the, or the, actually the shotgun guard, when they'd go on a run as to what gun he had. We've got an old pocket watch. This one here is a Colt Peacemaker. It's been used a lot because, boy, the hand grip is really worn down. But other than that, it's in really pretty nice shape. A Colt Lightning double action revolver. This little star here, this is a actual original uh, Deputy Sheriff star from the Old West. We have a spittoon from the bars, a little paper uh, or cloth bag from uh, the City National Bank, Council Bluffs, Iowa, with some silver, old silver dollars by it. Now, we have a branding iron here. And what's neat about this, this is an early one. It was one long piece of metal that a blacksmith had to form. So the best I can decipher, this was the circle triangle brand. Now the rifle we have here, this is a 4570 carbine. This would be used by the Calvary. Once again, we have the, what they call the saddle ring with the slide, where the Calvary uh, officer would have, or trooper would have the shoulder rig that this would hook onto. So when he was riding a horse, it would be carried here, or if he could have it backwards. But this is the exact type of rifle that Custer's men had at Little Bighorn. We have a pair of spurs. We have a nice old cabinet card here. And what I like about this one with the top hat and cane, it reminds me of Bat Masterson. Not him, unfortunately, but it looks like him. An old malt vigor bottle, and this would be, it was alcoholic, but it would be like snake oil to make you feel good. Another old pocket watch. And down here in this section, Wild Bill Hickok, this is the last poker hand he ever held. Aces and eights. And from everything I can find out and research, the fifth card was the Jack of Diamonds. This is an original Pharaoh deck that is dated 1868. The date is right back here. Just some poker chips and a small little, this is called the Defender 89. Wild Bill Hickok was shot in the back of the head by Jack McCall. Jack McCall was hanged. Before they hanged him, the reason he said that he shot him from behind was he didn't want to commit suicide. If he went on at the front, 
well, Bill would have killed him. He was a very good shot. Now, I would just like to uh, say thank you to all of our first responders and to all of our military forces from the past, the present, the future. Thank you very much for your service. Happy trails, everybody. Have a great day.